there. Hi, Solange. Hello, David. How are you, Dr. Wright? Hey, how are you? Great talk. Amazing. Very well, thank you. Wow. Well, of course. You, um, you were a wonderful collaborator, Salome, on coming up with some important things to, you know, to converse about. So I'm very grateful. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I have even more follow-up questions. So why don't you join <laughs> in? Um, what are, uh, if you could, you had mentioned something about um, how members might even be overutilizing care if, uh, if they have anxiety. Uh, I mean, can you talk more about that? And is that, a, is that actually a good thing or a bad thing? Right. Um, you are right that we can't really talk about use of care or utilization, as we often will say in healthcare, without uh, acknowledging whether it's appropriate and helpful or inappropriate and potentially harmful. And I do put those things together because um, inappropriate care actually can be harmful and detrimental to the healthcare experience for people. It does not advance them in terms of their health outcomes. And so we do need to think about this a little bit. And so um, there are uh, reasons for which a person with a behavioral health condition will underutilize care, which we really talked about in this previous session. Why don't people enter into the healthcare system the same way? Um, what are the issues that are sometimes going on that may not come to the forefront or might cause some reluctance? And often because of that, because of not getting the proactive really needed care that you know, population health really provides prevention, disease um, interventions, disease management, early treatment, prevention of progression, all the things that we like to do, which includes the behavioral health conditions as well as the medical conditions, um, that because those things aren't happening, at least to what we might consider as unmanaged care, which then creates more illness um, and um, downstream cost and often hospitalizations and ER visits and whatnot. That's the problem that we see. So that's what we might consider to be sort of inappropriate utilization, whereas appropriate utilization would be getting needed services at the right time and to prevent problems and to address them very quickly when they start to arise and prevent progression of disease. So evidence-based care, timely care, coordinated care, those sort of things. With anxiety specifically, and also with depression, and frankly, with a number of other conditions, you can see this sort of paradoxical high, um, high visit volume, even in a primary care setting, but it's not effective care. People can be reaching out and coming in for things, but without acknowledging or understanding or addressing what the root of that is, which often is an undiagnosed anxiety disorder, an undiagnosed depression disorder, or other mental health problem, perhaps even an undiagnosed um, substance use disorder, or even it's, it's been diagnosed, it's not recognized as the root cause of everything else that's going on and a prioritization. So unless those things are really called out, then it's just consumption of services without benefit, right? And that's you know not, not the way that we want things to happen. And so I can think of numerous examples in primary care and with my primary care colleagues and even what I see in care today where people are coming in, but it's not effective care. Uh, you know, that's what, and, and part of it is largely because we're not addressing the underlying problem. So um, one of the things that Catasys has been able to do is to make some correlations through AI and advancement and who actually has a condition before it's even uh, formally diagnosed so that you can get this advanced view and include them in your, 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 um, in your population for treatment. Um, Catasys goal really is to intervene in these ways and get people to medical care so that they can utilize the services appropriately. So there's a lot there, but that's uh, hopefully at least directionally part of the question that you were asking. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely, that was great. So, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, these these folks have comorbid conditions. You, yes. So, what are some uh, ways that a behavioral health condition, for example, um, stops a member from and treating any other of their chronic conditions? Yeah, perfect. Next question, because we we're just talking about the importance of recognizing what is happening in maybe a social space, but also in a behavioral health perspective because uh, what we believe, and I think probably know to be true now, is that if you don't address the behavioral health condition, the medical condition can't get better, right? It just is this sort of like a hierarchy of needs. So there's the behaviors that we bring in, there's the social aspects, 
but it's the behavioral health condition that really needs to be addressed in order for the medical conditions to get better. So you were asking about some of the challenges, you know, in doing that and how do we engage with people? So a person with, and, and there's a in really interesting interplay here too, where if you think about um, the effects of stress and stress infecting um, mental health, and then that also creating this connection to physical health, which could be, for example, pain levels are worse and um, hypertension goes up and cardiovascular disease, you know, increases. This is all kind of connected, it's all one body. But nonetheless, um, it is really addressing, you know, those, this, those behavioral health conditions that gives you the opportunity then to adequately treat the medical conditions. And most people, um, you know, where you're seeing sort of this upside down situation with the cost do have both. It's not just the behavioral health condition, it's the chronic conditions as well. We're getting sicker as a population. This is what we're seeing, more complexity. And it's really this space of those two things coming together and how we prioritize the treatment there. Um, did that get to your question or do you want to, did you want me to refocus a little bit on parts of that, David? No, absolutely. That, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Well, I've got, um, I know we only have a couple minutes left, but I have a couple more if, if we have time. First, sure. let's start with um, why is personalized care important for specifically mm -hmm. the members you serve? That was a theme that came up in your talk. Yes. Um, individualized or personalized care we think about it, um, and we can all relate to this, I think this might be just like a common experience type of example. We each receive our healthcare in a very personalized way. Right? We think about our health on an individual level. We think about where our health fits into the rest of our lives on an individual level. And we each have individual experiences about what's going on in our environments and this kind of framework of total health um, that is going to dictate that we have to think about how we treat a person the same way. So there are some things that we can apply in common. Everybody needs evidence-based care, you know, those sort of things, everybody needs access to care. But when it comes down to what is the right thing for an individual, I really think it has to be on a personal level. It has to fit in with what's going on in a person's life. It has to fit in with that person's goals and priorities. And boy, did I learn that lesson early on when I came into practice, you know? So, um, so I think that's the nature of personalized care. And um, most of healthcare is designed for groups of people in sort of, you know, with checklists and, and whatnot. I've been part of those organizations. I understand the purpose. You have to be able to customize it in some ways and that's very difficult. So I think one of the things that you, we can be doing is think about how are we adjusting our approach based on what an, an individual needs instead of the opposite, which is we're expecting individuals to come into a system that's been designed for groups of people and not for an individual experience. So that's, I think one of the things that, um, that you know, our model has figured out is how to make that experience happen differently. Um, and it's tremendously successful because you're matching up with what people really need and giving them what they need at the right time. So, yeah, Fabulous. doesn't that sound like the care that you would want to receive? I mean, that's, that's the care <laughs> I would want to receive, so yeah. Um, I mean, our list of questions, we've got so many more, but we are out of time. So what I'd like to do is invite the audience to head over to the Cadis's sponsor booth. It's just gonna be on your left-hand side to follow up with any, any questions. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much, Dr. Wright, for joining us. This was fabulous. Thanks everyone.